Hello, Keith Rucker here, VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I got a quick project we're going to be working on today. And what I've got here is a cast iron foot off of a very early Delta Unisaw. This is what they call the four footers. Instead of having a solid uh, base all the way around them, they had four individual feet. And this is one that a viewer sent me that has a crack in it. The cast iron has a crack in it and asked me if we could repair that, uh, do a little braze job on it. So we're gonna be getting this thing cleaned up. Uh, we're gonna be doing some things to get it ready so it won't crack any further and then braze it together so that uh, we stop the crack altogether. So let's get in there and get started on this. So let's take a look at the problem here up close first. This is uh, the crack right here. I, hopefully you can see that it starts here at the outside, runs up to about here, and when you flip it over, it does go all the way through the casting. So I think we'll start by getting all this old paint off of here. He's gonna be repainting this anyway. Uh, that's just gonna be contaminants to get into a brazing job. So I wanna get this over to the wire wheel and get her cleaned up. Clean this thing up, I'm just gonna use a wire wheel on an angle grinder, and I'm using one of these Osborne Tough Brush uh, wheels, which I've been using for a while now. I've been really impressed with these uh, for holding up really well and doing a good job. So uh, let's get in here and get it done. Next thing I want to do here is really just kind of outline the, the crack for you guys where you can make sure you can see it real good. And I want to find the end of it. And the end of it is about right there uh, in case you can't see it. What I'm going to do is anytime you're dealing with a crack like this, that hasn't gone, it's not broken completely off. We don't want this crack to continue later on. Uh, so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure it stops right there where I circled that little bit right here. And to do that, I'm just gonna drill a hole. I'm gonna drill a hole clean through and that'll make it actually where that is a place where the crack stops. And then when we braze it all up, of course we'll fill that hole in either with braze or he can do it uh, with some uh, filling material later on if he wants to whatever to get it smooth for repainting. But the main thing is, is we don't want that crack to just be inside that brace because it can actually continue on. Once that fracture starts, it wants to continue. So I'm gonna get a drill and we'll just uh, drill a little hole right there and that should hopefully be the end of that crack. I'm just gonna use a hand drill here. This is so awkward to try to set up on the drill press. Uh, and the precision of this isn't that critical, so. There we go, that's just a little eighth inch hole through there. I've got this clamp down to my table and I've highlighted the area in there where the crack is at, the line. And what I'm gonna do is come in here with an angle grinder with a little cut off disc on here and I'm gonna try to just open up, create a little groove along that crack and that's gonna give me some area for some brazing material to get down into and adhere to. Uh, so let's get in there. I've just got a little uh, cut off disc. It's just a 46 grit um, cut off disc on here. And we'll get in there and get it. All right, I tried to get down about half the depth of the material. Uh, that's, again, just should give me something good for that braze to grip onto and hold everything together. And I may try to come in here with a little grinding disc and just kind of get some virgin material all the way around uh, the, even the edges here so that it can kind of flow over. Well guys, I've decided what I'm gonna do for brazing this is instead of using a flame torch, we're gonna TIG braze it using the TIG welding outfit. And it's the exact same principle of uh, flame brazing, except we're basically using the TIG torch to create our heat. And the nice thing about this uh, TIG setup is when you're brazing, uh, particularly on smaller parts like this, is that you've got the shielding gas coming out so you don't have to worry about using a flux like you do with uh, gas brazing. 
So um, we're going to get in here. Uh, I, I will just say that I, I, I like TIG brazing, particularly on thinner cast iron parts. When I get into something really big and heavy and massive, uh, I, I like the, the flame brazing a little bit better because I can get control my heat a little bit better on, on something that's got a huge heat sink to it. That's just my preference. I'm sure others will have different opinions on that. Uh, but on something thin like this, I think it's gonna be a really good application. So we're gonna get in here. The, the idea here when you're TIGging this is, is that we're not trying to get enough heat in here that we're melting the cast iron. We're not welding here, we're brazing. Brazing is where you use uh, dissimilar materials to hold something together. In this case, we're gonna be using aluminum bronze as our filler material. Down in here, we'll just kind of run it right down in that groove, fill it all in. Uh, this bronze will actually molecularly bind with the cast iron and give a very good strong uh, um, repair in here. Now my customer that I'm doing this for specifically asked me to only do the inside. He doesn't want me to grind on or braze the outside of it for appearance purposes. So we're only going to be doing the inside of this one. So uh, anyway, let's get in here. I'm going to pull my shade down and I'm going to go ahead and Make sure I got some shielding gas going here. And we'll start an arc. I'm gonna have to start by letting this sit there for a few minutes or a few seconds anyway to get enough heat into the cast iron to start brazing it. So again, I'm just kind of soaking some heat in here right now. I'm using that arc to do it. I'm not trying to melt, melt any metal. Introducing my bronze now. I'm still got my heat down kind of low. But I can use that bronze kind of as a gauge for when I got enough heat to start letting this thing go. I'm gonna put a little bit more heat in now. All right, we're starting to get some material brazen in here. Letting that gas finish purging in there as we finish up that whip raise. All right, guys, now we're just going to wrap this thing up in a welding blanket and let her cool off nice and slow. Uh, that just helps uh, keep any stresses from the heat cooling down in there and will help prevent it from cracking any further. So we'll let that cool down. I let this cool down and cleaned it up a little bit. And dang it, we got a little problem in here. So when this part heated up, evidently it exposed another crack. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's another crack that kind of comes right along through there. I suspect that uh, there was already a fracture down in this casting that was from the previous crack and, and whenever we heated it up and went through that cycle, it just exposed an, another crack to coming across there. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that one up, drill holes on the ends just like before, and I'm gonna do another braze uh, going across it to clean that up. So I'm gonna flip it over on the other side, uh, highlight my crack and drill my holes.
it's kind of tight to get down in here. I may have to, uh, I'm going to try this with this little uh, die grinder here. Kind of open that crack up. I put a little carbide burr on here and hopefully I can get down in there with that now. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. Let's get the TIG brazing setup going again and we'll get in there and get that done. So here we go again. I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll TIG this up. Hopefully I won't get in the way of the camera while I'm doing it. Again, we're gonna start by just slowly putting some heat in here. Just trying to soak some heat down into the part without melting any cast iron. Just enough to get an arc started here. I'll start easing my heat up now. It looks like we're starting to get a little bit of melting going on with our braise. Maybe we can uh, go ahead and get this over in the blanket before it starts cooling down too much. So guys, I let this cool down and it uh, looks like we have success now. I don't see any more cracks or anything in here. We uh, got a nice braze joint right across there on the back and uh, all looks good. Now on the front side, um, I did this off camera, but basically I wanted to kind of fill in some of these little holes. I had the hole here and here that we drilled through. We pretty much got braze all the way through this one and there was a little bit of just in the cracks and so forth in there. I wanted to fill all that in. So what I used was just some um, uh, auto body type uh, putty here. So this is like, this is Bondo brand and that's what a lot of people call the stuff is Bondo. So it's two part thing. You mix up some, uh, put a little bit of the hardener in there and uh, you fill it in. So we've let that dry now. And uh, I'm just gonna come in here. Because this is a cast surface, I'm not trying to get this thing super slick. He wants to keep that as much as that texture in there as possible. I'm just using a coarse sandpaper here and we're just gonna make sure everything is sanded down nice and flush. I tried to, when I got through with the, the, the putty to not leave as very much residue behind. And that's probably for what we're doing right here, good enough. You put, when we put some paint over that, uh, you won't be able to see anything. At least that's the plan. And with that, I think we're done. I think we're ready to pack this up and send it back. All right, so the viewer I did this for, John, made a very nice little uh, packaging here. Got a custom fit foam, and we will put the part right back into the same box that he sent me, and we will get this uh, in the mail headed back to him. There we go. How about that? All right, guys, that's gonna be a wrap. Uh, we'll get this in the mail and headed back to John. And one more job complete. There you go, that's how I do some TIG brazing to repair cast iron and get it all put back together and 
ready to go for hopefully another 60 or 70 years. How about that? So with that, thanks for watching as always. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time around.